continuing coverage of the 2023 legislative session. A bill to eliminate gender affirming care for minors in Louisiana cleared the House Health and Welfare Committee yesterday. The move coming after hours of testimony for and against the legislation. My husband and I are parents of two teenagers, one of whom is transgender. They do exist. In the House Health and Welfare Committee, lawmakers heard almost five hours of testimony on House Bill 463, which would effectively ban all gender affirming care for minors in Louisiana. Children do not have the maturity or the mental capacity to fully understand the consequences of these experimental procedures. Central Louisiana State Representative Gabe Furman arguing his bill will protect kids from procedures used to treat gender dysphoria. Those in support of Furman's bill included two individuals who detransitioned. Doctors medicalized me starting puberty blockers and testosterone at 13 years old. I didn't know what things like cervixes or ovulation were or how the full menstrual cycle worked yet, but I was cleared by adults who had a full understanding of such things to make a decision that would affect my fertility, the onward development of my sexual organs, and the complex processes unique to me as a woman. Many of those in opposition were physicians who provide gender-affirming care, who argued procedures of care require extensive counseling and conversations with children and their families before any actions are taken. This bill is inappropriate government, out overreach, and if passed, would prohibit trained, experienced providers from following the well-established standards for safe, effective, and medically necessary care to their patients. Of those procedures, a number of healthcare professionals said surgery is not one of them for minors in Louisiana. We went through a year of counseling before any sort of medical intervention was ever discussed with our transgender son, who's now 14. Um, surgery's never been on the table. A study commissioned by the legislature on gender affirming care, though limited to Medicaid recipients, shows that from 2017 to 2021, an average of 14.6% of minors with gender dysphoria received hormone therapy or puberty blockers. Zero underwent surgery. The gender industry can only survive by promoting this idea that if we don't pump vulnerable kids full of massive doses of powerful drugs, they're going to commit suicide. Those in opposition argued that would be the case, which is why one committee member offered up an amendment to not ban gender affirming care for minors altogether, but require parental consent. That amendment failed 11 to 6. The bill cleared the committee in a 14 to 3 vote.